Hello, today we will learn how to make something like this. Hopefully, this does not look horrible. Hey everyone, today we're going to be discussing how to combine stable diffusion with Epsynth to create some interesting visuals. I've been meaning to make a video about this for a while and uh, today's the day, so I'm very excited. Um, I will show you an example of something I already did and uh, I'll do that right now. Uh, yeah, so here's a video of uh, this man just standing here and I wanted to make him into the Joker. So I ran him through Stable Diffusion and this is the results I got. I think it's very cool. Um, and uh, then I ran the results through Epsynth and this is the results I got from that. As you can see, it uses the image from Stable Diffusion and it follows the motion of the guy in the original video. As you can see down here, there are limitations to this. Obviously because the camera's pulling back, Epson doesn't have enough information to know what to do with that part. So uh, as you can see, it's kind of bleeding in there. Uh, but yeah, this is the limitations obviously and I'm gonna talk a little bit more about those limitations. But first we're gonna start with something new uh, from scratch so that I can show you the process of how I get this done. So. Yeah, let's get into it. All right, so the main video I'm gonna be using is this video right here of this guy. And then we're just gonna try to create something interesting with this guy. Uh, and the reason I chose videos like these is because there's like not as much movement. Uh, the moment that this guy starts to move his head or does something kind of crazy, then Epsynth doesn't know what to do with that unless I can create some more frames. And unfortunately with Stable Diffusion, um, it's very difficult to get consistent frames, um, almost impossible. And so, um, unfortunately that's going to be a limitation. We're going to have to work with one frame, unfortunately. So we'll just see what we can do and then make something with that. All right, let's go into stable diffusion. My favorite thing. Let's create something with this. All right. So I want to do something like this. Let me, let me grab this one. CFG scale higher and then bring the noising a little bit low because I know that I want it to kind of follow the shape that he is. I don't want it to go too crazy. All right. And uh, yeah, let's just see what we get on the first try. It's probably going to be very ugly. Typically, most of my first tries are just horrible. They look horrible. So that's what I'm expecting right now. Nightmare fuel. <laughs> but I kind of like some of the details. So maybe uh, since I do have the mid journey checkpoint, mid journey art style, let's see if it makes, uh, makes it look better. Okay, yeah, well, it looks very creepy. Um, let me take off some red lights because I maybe that just makes it look even scarier than what it what I'm intending for it. I think I'm still gonna get something creepy because I don't know, I, I'm trying to stay away from the human aspect of him. Okay. Um, let me bring this down. I mean, I still do want human qualities, but I don't want it to look like a human. I want it to look like a cyborg. Nah, not getting the results I like. Okay, this looks kind of crazy looking. Um, all right, so I'm changing a little bit of uh, the prompt. Okay, that looks kind of cool. All right, I think now we're getting somewhere kind of interesting. He has like the eyes and the nose and the mouth, the ears. So that's what I'm trying to get um, some of that, but also see this kind of creepy insides of a robot, you know? The super realistic looking hair is kind of funny. Um, but uh, yeah, let's, let's, uh, let's try to see if we can come up with something a little bit better. What's really gonna make the difference is the, the noising scale and also, yeah, that looks not better. Uh, the denoising scale and the prompts. The prompts are like a big thing. And I think sometimes uh, I underestimate how much just changing one thing in the prompt will do to the whole image. Um, how about uh, Unreal Engine? Okay. I feel like I'm just like making it too long now. This looks like, this just looks like a zombie. So <clears throat> there's definitely a sweet spot because at uh, 0 0.55, it's like doing a little too much. Uh, it's just looking too, uh, 
it looks a little too fake to me. But then I go down by five points and look at it gives me more realistic. I mean, this part doesn't look realistic, but um, it gives me more realistic uh, look. And then I go down to, uh, 0 0.45 and then it just gives me it gives me too much of the human. Yeah. And that just looks weird. It's still it's giving me more of something that looks like it looks a little more real in my opinion and it looks like it fits better let's actually run this and see what kind of results we get with when we run it through epson okay <clears throat> so i'm going to save this one download style and what you want to do with this is you want to make sure it's uh it's labeled uh zero 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 so four zeros uh, the reason you want to label it uh, zero is because you want Epson to recognize where everything is at. You want Epson to align the style with the original frames and it's it goes by the sequence uh, number sequence. So this is the one I ran to Stable Diffusion and it's labeled zero, 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 zero. Basically, if you don't know this, I, I taught this in my last uh, video about Epson. Essentially, you export all the frames um, into a folder you um you drag the original frames into the video and you drag the style into keyframes this is something that i already went over in the last video so if you haven't uh if you don't know about this you can go there to look at it all right so i'm just gonna bump this up to 20. i want uh, as little flickering as possible and then diversity i want to make sure that's low this just affects like, I don't know if you've ever seen the effect, like the smearing and the the, the jitteriness of everything. I'm, uh, I use these numbers that really help me. And I, I put the synthetic detail high um, to hopefully get some better results. All right, so then I'm just gonna run this. Ah, I forgot to make a folder, but it automatically makes a folder where all your uh, stuff is at. So this is gonna take a little bit to run. It's a lot of frames. As you can see, it's doing all the frames in here. And then we're gonna put these into After Effects and uh, and we're gonna see the effect of it. This is really cool. This came out really cool. So we let that finish and then we'll put it into After Effects and then um, see what it looks like, man. I'm super excited. What I love about Epsynth is that it runs, it does everything pretty fast. Look at that creepy. Look at that. <laughs> Look at that mouth. Damn, this guy uh, needs to go visit a dentist or something. Oh my God, that's, that's just really creepy. All right, so that should be done. Let's open After Effects. All right, so let's bring in those frames that we just created. Make sure the PNG sequence is clicked and then uh, yeah, so now you're gonna have it here. Frame rate is 30 and uh, our original video is 25. So we wanna make sure this is the right frame rate. So I right click, uh, put interpret, main, and then I change this to 25. And when I drag it in here, it should be the exact same length as this one it is. All right, so moment of truth. Let's see what it looks like. Run it. Yeah, as you can see, it's uh, it breaks apart a little bit when he's smiling. Ideally, what you want to do in this situation like this, ideally in the ideal situation is like, you want to have another frame where it has this style, but it, but it's getting the information from this frame. Like you want to get this frame and then run it through stable diffusion. The only thing, the only problem with that um, is that if I put another frame into here, like for example, I put uh, this one where he's already smiling, you're gonna see what happens. Like pay attention to this image right here. So as you can see, once I run another frame into here, it, the image looks way different. And so unfortunately it doesn't maintain the same style and uh, if I go back to this one, it's gonna give me the results it gave me earlier, but it doesn't keep, um, 
Yeah, so you get this result. So unfortunately, if, if, if stable diffusion can give me this exact style, the way it looks exactly here, but with but following the new the other frame where he's smiling, um, then that would be perfect. Then we just run those two frames or three or four frames through Epsynth. But unfortunately, that's um, that doesn't work. Uh, and so, typically, if you are going to run this and you want to get something that's uh, using like a frame like this, in order to make this effect more convincing. Ideally, what you would do is you would just um, shoot this in a tripod so you don't have that shakiness from the camera. And you know how like all this warping that's happening here. Um, and also not have them change much, a lot of their expression. Maybe to keep this expression, but just if they, if they talk, they do like subtle mouth movements um, and then uh, do it that way. But uh, since he's doing like a big old grin right there, you see, it's like it's 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 following that that smile, but um, it's just making it look weird and like distorted, um, and it just doesn't just it doesn't keep that same you know this the same fidelity to the style right here. So yeah, that's that's the limitation of this. But uh, if if stable diffusion could get to a point where it where it can run another frame and keep the same style, then I think, man, that's just gonna change so much and it's gonna open the doors for so many other uh, abilities to use VFX and uh, not actually have to create effects or any 3D effects, because this this by itself just looks great. And you can see like right here, it keeps it pretty good when he's not moving. When he's not smiling, it looks pretty good. But then once it starts to break apart, once he starts to smile, unfortunately, it tries to retain it in the same place, but it's like, it's trying to track it somehow, but it just can't, can't fully track it. So yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's, that's the unfortunate part. So I try to get different results with stable diffusion. I got this and I think uh, this looks pretty cool. Um, I'm to run that. Uh, I had some other ones here. There's this last one which looks crazy, it looks, look, this looks amazing, but the problem with this one, I can already, I can already tell that it's just gonna uh, struggle because like this, like a glass eye thing, but it's not where the eye is supposed to be. So I know this is gonna have some weird uh, effects to it, but uh, let, let's run some of these and see what, what we get. So I just ran um, two other styles through Epsynth and let's see what those look like in a bit. So we have two other versions of this. No. Oh man, it actually keeps it together for a very long time. But then once it gets to like this part in the face, yeah, it starts to like break. Yeah, unfortunately. All right, so you got that one and look at this one. This is actually one of my favorite, this is my favorite one to be honest, but I know this is the one that's gonna break the most. Yeah. It's still very impressive, right? I mean, this is still very impressive. It's just, um, it's not convincing because of like what's happening here. Obviously, like I said, if you can add frames, that would solve that problem. I think what Epson is capable of is amazing. I think for the next step to improve this, Stable Diffusion would need to be able to generate images more consistently. And uh, it just doesn't do that right now, unfortunately. But I think very soon we will get there. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if like, in the next month or even weeks, uh, we hear of uh, some kind of advancement with this. Um, but for now, this is this is what I was able to do. Um, and like I said, it, it depends on your shot. It depends on you know what the footage that you're working with. If you do very subtle movements, then it works so great. Um, if you do, um, if there is camera movement, camera shaking, then that's going to affect the image, unfortunately. So. At least at this point, that's how it works. If you have any advice on how to make this better, let me know. I know that uh, there's a lot of you who are very savvy with this kind of stuff. I will still uh, mess around with this a little bit. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate every one of you. Thank you for all the new subscribers, everybody that's coming and supporting and liking and commenting and all that stuff. Even those that are uh, critiquing, uh, 
critiquing every little word that I say. Uh, I appreciate you guys just for interacting. Um, but yeah, thank you so much, guys, for everything. I appreciate you guys. Uh, and uh, yeah, let me know of any other ideas you would like me to discuss or talk about. And uh, maybe there can be a part two to this if I can discover some new techniques or something. All right, guys, thank you so much. Take care. God bless. Peace.